What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Rig Nose Hoops, and this is another installment of the What's Next series. I love talking about young teams. Um, I was excited to talk about the Hornets and the Rockets in a video a few weeks ago, and I got some more young teams that I'm really ready to talk about. But this young team that we're talking about today is one of the ones with one of the, I would say, more confusing futures that we can see right now. I like what a lot of rebuilding teams are doing as far as just stockpiling on talent. But the Minnesota Timberwolves are probably doing one of the worst jobs in that that I can think of off the top of my head. I think the Rockets are doing great. The Hornets, I think Toronto, I think even Orlando is doing a pretty good job. I don't know what the hell is going on in Minnesota. So let's talk about it, man. Uh, let's talk about what we can. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. This is a place where we talk about NBA basketball almost daily. So if you love hoops, this is the place for you. And Minnesota fans have been through it in the last well since their since their existence honestly i mean other than the kg years there has not been much success in minnesota and look i was i'm 21 years old i was born in the year 2000 the timberwolves have made the playoffs one time since 2004 i started watching basketball in about 09 they have made the playoffs one time since then and that was the jimmy butler the jimmy butler saga and even then i mean it's crazy to think about it because the timberwolves at the time when jimmy butler was there they were like the three seed i think they were the three seed in the western conference and then jimmy butler gets hurt jimmy butler gets hurt he misses a large chunk of the season and they drop all the way down to the eight seed and on the last day of the regular season they're essentially playing a playing game against the denver nuggets to Secure the AC. The winner gets the AC to play the Houston Rockets. And they won that game in overtime. And that's just the most Minnesota Timberwolves thing. You go from the three seed all the way drop down to the eight seed. And then next season, Jimmy Butler implodes on the team. Uh, that's still one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. Him taking the, the third stringers and beating the starters and stuff. And he forces his way out. And since then, they haven't really done anything. They've been garbage, to say the least. They have had some injuries to some top players. Carl Anthony Towns has missed time here and there. And I know he's been through a lot just off the court. And that would take a toll on somebody, anybody mentally, especially, you know, an athlete trying to perform at the highest of levels of their profession. Um, but the Timberwolves haven't really helped him out in really trying to acquire or hit on draft picks. It's, it's been kind of murky in Minnesota. We know about. We know about the D'Angelo Russell trade. They gave up draft capital, so they mortgaged a little bit of their future to bring in somebody that is a former all-star, but he hasn't really gotten back to that form since he's left the Brooklyn Nets. Um, he dealt with injuries last season, too, but, you know, you traded a, you traded a decent amount to bring D'Lo in. You're paying him a lot of money. You would like to see the production go up. Carl Anthony Towns, of course, is their star. He's one of the best bigs in the league. He's one of the best young players in the league, but... It's hard It's hard to win when you don't have consistent talent around you, when your team doesn't do a good job of drafting. Look, Anthony Edwards looks like he's going to be very promising. He looks like they made a good, solid pick there, picking Anthony Edwards. I think he's going to be an all-star caliber player in the future. But recently, the Timberwolves, they just traded away Jared Culver. And for those of you who don't know, Jared Culver was a top pick. I think he was the number six pick in the 2019 draft. Um, the they traded up to get Jared Culver, too. They traded away Dario Saric, who is a very good rotational player. He was in the rotation for a team that just made the NBA Finals. And they traded it. They traded him away, and the pick that ended up being Cam Johnson for Jared Culver. And Jared Culver has not done much of anything in his young NBA career. And they just traded him away to bring in Patrick Beverly. Uh, they also traded Juan Hernan Gomez. Uh, that story is kind of crazy too because I think he had like a, a he had like an off season injury or something like that. He wanted to go play in the Olympics. Timberwolves told him like, nah, you got to rehab. You can work out, but nah, you're not going to play in the Olympics for Spain. And then they trade him away. So that's kind of crazy right there. But it's, it's it's hard to see what the future in Minnesota is, man. Because I mean, just like a guy as young as Jared Culver, two years in the league, he's already on to his next team, a lottery pick, a top six pick. And the Timberwolves like, we don't have time to wait and see if you can develop into something. We'll just take Patrick Beverly, who I think can help change the culture a little bit. But how much does that help? I don't think that vaults you any higher than what you are right now. And that's a, a lottery team. And the, the Timberwolves, it's, 
it must be it has to be hard being a fan of the Minnesota Timberwolves because even last season the Rockets won the Rockets lost like twenty something games in a row. And still somehow the Timberwolves were the worst team in the league, even after a twenty plus game losing streak by the Houston Rockets. Now, they did start playing better at the end of the season. Um, they made the coaching change, which kind of threw everybody for a loop because it's not often times that you hire a new head coach that's not on your staff in season. That's I've never seen that happen in the NBA as far as I can remember. But they did that. They hired Chris Finch. I think he was on the Raptors coaching staff. They hired him midseason after they had fired, uh, I think it was Ryan Saunders. And NBA players were hot about it. I remember Dame and CJ were saying, you know, other guys deserve a chance too, but they already had their guy handpicked. It seemed like seemed like they had been prepping for that for a while because the same day Ryan Saunders got fired, Chris Finch was hired as the head coach. So that, you know, caught, kind of caught everybody by surprise. But they did start playing better under Finch. And, you know, I like seeing guys like Jalen Noel play good. Jaden McDaniels started playing really good. Guys like Nas Reed. I think Jared Vanderbilt played a lot better. Um, they got talent. They they have talent. Um, they also tr- just traded away Ricky Rubio uh, to get back to William Prince. The moves, that they didn't really do much moves in the offseason um, as far as, like, free agency. And they didn't have any draft picks, which is kind of poor for a team that's bad to not have your draft picks. But that's how it goes when you kind of swing for defenses. Um, I think, I don't know, man. It, it's like, it's... I don't, it's it's tough for the for the Timberwolves. They've been heavy in the Ben Simmons conversations, and I think Ben Simmons in Minnesota would help this team out a lot. Does that make them a, a playoff team? No, but it makes them a better team. Ben Simmons, cat. I would assume you would have to give up De- D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell, the Timberwolves. I mean, I'm sorry, the Sixers might ask for for Malik Beasley too, because that's just how uh, Daryl Morey's been operating this offseason. And Ben Simmons talk, he wants a lot. And I don't. I think it would be worth looking. I think is the Timberwolves should be deep into Ben Simmons' talks. I really do think they should be because I think Ben Simmons is the type of player that can really help change just the the culture of this team if he's locked in and he's you know trying to connect with Cat, who I guess they're they're close friends or good friends, even though Cat and D'Lo are also good friends. But Ben Simmons is the type of player that I think, given in the right situation, can be one of those top like he can be the all-star player that he has been but i think he can step his game up to a new level now, obviously hopefully he's really working on his game in the offseason stuff that he's actually going to be doing in games uh I, if you've seen ben simmons workout videos they look kind of just eh. like are you going to be doing this in game bro but anyways back to the topic <laughs> um i would love to see ben simmons in minnesota this is a team that's not has not been a good defensive team, especially last season. And you're trying to change the culture, man. You're trying to bring winning basketball. Ben Simmons has been on playoff teams every year of his career, and he's been a big part of that. Uh, despite what happened last postseason, he's been a big part of the 76ers process. He's helped turn his team from one of the worst teams in the league for a few years in a row to, you know, a team that had real championship expectations the last few seasons. So I think if – I think they should throw whatever they can without mortgaging too much to get Ben Simmons. If that is D'Lo, Malik Beasley, or maybe a pick or two. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like, but the Timberwolves should definitely look into that. I, that's really the only way that this team can get much better, man. They do have their draft pick next year, but, you know, the way their team's currently constructed, they're banking on D'Angelo Russell getting back to all-star form. Anthony Edwards taking a step forward from his rookie season, which I expect him to do. Um, guys like Jaden McDaniels, Noel, even Cat, just to be healthy. Like they're just expecting guys to take steps forward, and I think this is that's cool if you're like a a team that just hit their rebuilding phase, like the Houston Rockets, or the Magic just hit the full reset of what they had with their core, and teams like that. Maybe the Toronto Raptors, but. Cat, I'm sure Cat wants to, you know, play winning basketball, man. And that is your star player. That's your star player. And you don't want to start hearing the trade rumblings because that could potentially happen. And I know they've done what they can to keep Cat happy, but sometimes star players, they got to be real with their situations. And 
if it start if it doesn't start to look any better in Minnesota, those Carl Anthony Town photoshops could turn into a reality of him in a New Jersey. That's all I'm gonna say. Hopefully the Timberwolves figure it out because I definitely feel for their fan base. They've been through a lot. Only one playoff appearance in damn near twenty years. So hopefully they get it together. But that is this installment of the What's Next series featuring the Minnesota Timberwolves. Be sure to tune in next time because I might be talking about your favorite team. So stay tuned, y'all. I'll be back, though. Peace.